in this amazing world that we have been given to take care of, there is a special place. A place where sunlight and water have created one of the most unique and beautiful regions on our precious planet. It's a land where a kaleidoscope of habitats has created a stunning rainbow of life. From high mountain glaciers, to cloud forests. And marshy moorlands. From equatorial jungles to wide open grassland and swampy verdant flats. From desert plains to mysterious lakes and wild lost worlds. Craggy islands wrapped in abundant oceans and raging rivers. to the world's most spectacular and unexplored ancient lands. This is a country with some of the most incredible creatures and diverse environments on Earth. It boasts nine unique natural habitats and is the second most biodiverse country on the planet. A land of stunning, often hidden natural beauty. This is Colombia Revealed. To the outside world, Colombia is often seen as a country with a dark and painful past. But there is another Colombia, a unique land of secret, magical beauty. A magic that, for many, has never been seen. Situated in the northwest of South America, Colombia supports some of the most incredible wildlife on the planet. Mammals, birds, frogs, reptiles, butterflies, and plants, and three legendary creatures of South America. the biggest bird. The most formidable snake. The strongest feline. This wild bounty is thanks to Colombia's overflowing gift from nature. Water. Colombia is embraced by the wild Pacific Ocean and the warm Caribbean Sea. Bordered by the Amazon and Orinoco basins, 
enriched by the great Cauca and Magdalena rivers. Colombia is a country eternally bound to water. Water's journey begins in the mountains. The great Andes range and the record-breaking peaks of Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. Just 42 kilometers from the sea, These are the highest coastal mountains on Earth. Legend has it, these white-capped peaks touching the clouds are the gateway to heaven. And still today, the few remaining indigenous peoples of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta look up to the high crests to pay respect to their mother Earth. To the south of the Sierras are the majestic Andes Mountains, stretching the length of Colombia. Meltwater from these ancient glaciers runs off into the rivers below. fields of El Coqui are some of the oldest waters in Colombia. wingspan of any bird, over three meters. Rising with the mountain thermals, the Andean condor glides above the clouds, looking for food. live for 75 years. But their numbers are in decline as its wild lands are encroached upon. Breeding programs in Colombia and the USA must succeed if this breathtaking bird is to keep soaring across the Andean skies. Here, in the high mountains, life and death are just a breath apart. At the end of the day, the temperature drops to well below freezing in just a few hours. the sun climbs in the sky, the land below the icy peaks awakens. And an amazing cycle begins. The fogs and clouds that roll in will end up quenching the thirst of millions.
This is part of Colombia's most distinctive landscape, the Paramo. It is the richest high mountain environment in the world, with over 700 unique types of plant flourishing here. Over half of all the planet's paramos are found in Colombia. The paramo is like a giant sponge. It absorbs the runoff from glaciers and pulls water from the clouds in a process called cloud stripping. Here in Chingaza, the silvery green giants, the Frelahon, are key to this. Each leaf has tiny, downy hairs, specially adapted to trap moisture from the fogs. Some plants can trap up to 40% of their weight in water. The forests and plants breathe mist off the paramo. The wetlands filter water to make it pure. And then the sponge overflows with fresh water. Billions of gallons pour from the hillsides. This water will quench the thirst of the country's fastest growing cities. Colombia's population has grown by over 12 million in the past 20 years to more than 48 million. Nearly 80% of these people now live in rapidly expanding cities like Cali, Medellin and Bogota all of whom rely entirely on this natural fountain. But this resource is not limitless and can only be protected if the Paramo is. This delicate landscape covers only 2% of Colombia. Yet it provides 70% of all the country's fresh water. And the tragedy is, the precious paramos are being eaten away by agriculture and industry. The loss of these lands will turn off the tap to millions. Below the paramos, lush greenery drapes the mountains. The fertile slopes are nurseries to the abundant cloud forests that overflow with life. A spectacled bear is a rare sight. He is looking for food. 
the only bears in South America, their existence is under threat from poaching and habitat loss. Their survival depends on the preservation of the complex ecosystem they live in. Conservationists are now using satellite technology to gather vital information and protect the remaining bears, estimated to be less than 3,000 left in the wild. Spectacled bears climb trees to feed on fruit, nuts and honey. This youngster needs all the climbing practice he can get. Also in the lush temperate zones across Colombia is a tiny winged wonder. Flitting between the flowers are over 147 species of hummingbird. More than anywhere else on Earth. Legend says they are sent to Earth to seduce the moon and that they fly long distances on the back of geese. The truth is almost as incredible as the legends. Hummingbirds' wings beat around 60 times a second. they can visit up to 5,000 flowers a day, consuming twice their body weight to get enough energy. And because each flower is a precious feeding station, the territory needs defending. over, the winner keeps its flower. The loser will have to try his luck somewhere else. To the west of Colombia, between the Andes and the Pacific, lie the rain-soaked Cauca and Choco regions. These unique forested slopes 
are the wettest places on Earth. All along Colombia's Pacific coast, the humidity transforms the region into one of the world's most extraordinary bio hotspots. Small patches of forest are home to a thousand varieties of butterfly. They drink from a damp forest floor soaked in mineral-rich liquids. Inside this chrysalis is one of the largest and most brightly colored creatures of its kind. The Great Blue Morpho Butterfly. Its whole life, from caterpillar to butterfly, is only about four months long. When the butterfly's wings are closed, the brown spotted underside provides camouflage against predators such as birds. But in flight, it is a breathtaking beauty in blue. Birds also bejewel the branches of the forest. Over 800 species. The male club-winged mannequin beats its wings a hundred times a second, creating a sound like a song. Meanwhile, the male wire-tailed mannequins compete with each other over who's the best dancer. The female will decide. This natural hothouse is also the perfect place for orchids. There are more species here than anywhere else on Earth. But also lurking on the wet forest floor is one of the deadliest creatures on Earth. The golden dart frog is the world's most poisonous vertebrate. It's classed as hypertoxic. A single frog has enough venom to kill 10 grown men. It is also critically endangered and found only in Colombia's Choco region. Advertising its presence, the bright golden color 
acts as a warning to its only potential predator, a species of snake called Leophis epinephalus, which is resistant to the frog's deadly venom, but not completely immune. The venomous vertebrate gathers its toxicity from a diet of poisonous ants and termites. A sticky tongue works well. Sometimes too well. Especially if the ant has time to bite. After eating enough ants and extracting their poison, the frog now exudes a super venom from its back. Another creature found by the ever-flowing rivers of the Choco has a different idea on how to stay out of trouble. Sunlight keeps their muscles warm and ready to make a run for it at the first sign of danger. And in this jungle, that could come from anywhere. the basilisk lizards means that water is no barrier to escape. The richness created by the rains of the Choco fuels nature's dazzling tapestry. These same rains feed rivers flowing west, down off the mountain slopes. They meander past villages to the coast, their waters destined to meet the world's largest ocean. Ocean Kingdom is the coastal corridor of the humpback whale, now in a protected area. Every July, in a secret cove here in the Choco Zutrea National Park, these remarkable waters echo with an ancient song. It's the sound of humpback whales migrating from the cooler latitudes of the Antarctic Peninsula. Guarding the entrance to this cove is a young male. While this lone male sings, the whales under his protection arrive. A mother with her calf. The bay becomes a classroom. And it's about to provide the experience of a lifetime 
for a flotilla of whale watchers and eco-tourists. This learned skill enables whales to clean microbes off their skin and stun fish for hunting. Moving north in the Choco, rainfall is more modest and forests thin out. But this tree provides a special treat for one of Colombia's most bizarre mammals. Their favorite food is the flower of the pot-bellied tree. But fallen flowers are not good enough for the three-toed sloth. They will travel over long distances, slowly, to get to this fresh delicacy. When full up, two-thirds of the sloth's body weight is food. Lunch can take a month or more to digest. But their cute looks mean sloths are good business for animal traffickers, one of the fastest growing illegal businesses in Colombia. Highly adapted to their environment, those trapped to become pets nearly always die. This young sloth was found sick and dying in a backstreet shop. He is one of nearly 400 which conservationists have rescued and returned to the wild in recent years. This sloth is now lucky enough to be able to live in one of Colombia's protected forests. But to the northwest of the country, only 5% of the original primary forest remains. One beautiful but tragic symbol of this loss has become an emblem of exotic Colombia. These are the great wax palms of Quindío, and this is the only place on earth where they grow. They stand tall, some at over 60 meters. Once part of a thriving forest, now this forest is gone, cut down to make way for cattle to graze, which eat the precious new seedlings now that they have lost the protection of the rainforest. So no new palms can grow.
but cattle make money and feed people. These lonely trees that have stood for a hundred years could be gone in a generation. They are a stark warning to save the remaining forests before it's too late. Every year, Colombia's unique biodiversity is exposed to increasing threat. Through the center and north of Colombia, two rivers bear the brunt of this habitat destruction the Cauca and the Magdalena. They are the busy arteries for industry, connecting cities with the coast. Lush forests bordered their once clean waters. But now the saplings are burned before they can grow. River water is polluted by uncontrolled industry and township waste. And they are lined by a sea of monocrops and mining. One tiny creature, amongst many, is struggling in this deadly deforestation. the cotton-top tamarind. They only live in Colombia, in forests that once blanketed the northwest. And they are in trouble. There are now thought to be less than 2,000 wild adults left on Earth. A team of dedicated scientists are battling against the odds to save the remaining cotton tops and ultimately increase their numbers. But although their habitat is now being protected, the law is often ignored. Every day, the last few patches of forest are being eaten away by illegal forestry and farming. The struggle of the cotton tops must encourage everyone to preserve Colombia's beautiful land and the creatures who live in it. For one truly iconic animal, the river valleys of Colombia are the ancient highways to and from its hunting grounds. At the top of the food chain, the jaguar is the biggest cat in the Americas. With an estimated population of just 15,000 left in the wild in South America, Scientists are working to protect this magnificent cat by creating jungle corridors. Safe routes to link core jaguar populations from northern Argentina to Mexico, passing through Colombia. The complex network of river channels are no obstacle to these felines. Unlike most cats, jaguars are good swimmers.
stalk and ambush predators, they use natural cover to silently creep up on prey. Jaguars eat fish and turtles from the rivers, but they also hunt larger land prey, such as deer and these peccaries. For pound, jaguars have the most powerful jaws of all the big cats. They can kill with one bite at the back of the head, directly through the skull of their prey. The east of the Andes is the Los Llanos, part of the great Orinoco River Basin. These vast, low-lying wetlands, bordered by striking peaks, are Colombia's great plains. Spreading over more than 30% of the country's surface area, one of the world's most biologically diverse grasslands. Home to the world's largest rodent, the capybara, and South America's biggest snake, the anaconda. There are also nearly five million head of cattle in the region. And every year, they are rounded up. Which can be a very nervous time for some animals. These birds have good reason to be worried. Making your home underground is not the safest place to be in a stampede. But for burrowing owls, it's a part of life. Once the male has checked the coast is clear, it's safe for this season's chicks to emerge, to experience the glorious wide open plains of Los Llanos for the first time.
But life won't be easy for these young owls. The coming months, January to April, will get harder for all the region's animals. The winds have turned, and the northeast trades from the Caribbean blow across the flat eastern plains. With no mountains to encourage rain, the flooded savanna dries. In the drought conditions, everything is struggling to survive. But these caimans have a plan. They bury themselves in the mud and enter a sleep state called estivation. Almost motionless and using little energy, they will remain shut down until the pools flood and the food returns. In the early mornings in the dry season, on a few remote riverbanks in the Orinoco Basin, one of the rarest and strangest sounds on the planet can be heard. critically endangered reptiles on Earth, hunted almost to extinction for their skin. The sound is the mating call of the male Orinoco crocodile. female begin to snout and circle one another in a ritualized courtship. Eventually the male rotates the female and they end up belly to belly and submerge. The female lays up to 40 eggs underground. They will have to stay safe for 80 days before they hatch. If they are not buried deep enough, predators will detect them. The tegu lizard tastes the air in his search. After almost three months, the mother will return. Her belly to the ground, she listens for the sound of hatching. Tiny crocodiles catch the mother's attention. She digs to help them emerge. And life begins.
the mother carefully carries each baby to the safety of the water. These infant crocodiles still have a lot to get through. But hopefully the skin hunters will not return. The dry season continues, and in many places, things get worse before they get better. Long last. The rains arrive. Over March and April, water levels in some rivers rise by up to eight meters. Time of plenty returns. The scarlet ibis gather in their lofty perches, waiting for the insects disturbed by the rising waters. As the sun sets over the plains, the drought seems an eternity away. To the west of the Llanos, in a region called Serrania de la Macarena, the end of the dry season ignites an incredibly colorful bloom. This rainbow river is unique to Colombia. Called Caño Cristales, it's often celebrated as the most beautiful river in the world. The crystal clear waters showcase the vivid colors of the water weeds. The red color is thought to protect the plant from the equatorial sun. This spectacular display has a brief window. Too little water and the plants die. Too much rain and the river swells, submerging the glory. Further to the south, the waters flow to feed the mother of all rivers. The world's largest and South America's longest. This is Colombia's Amazon Basin.
As the waters slow and calm, they embrace the forest. A horned toad watches. Howler monkeys earn their name. Woolly monkeys forage. And squirrel monkeys scratch a livelihood from the leaf litter below. But anticipation is building. The rainy season has now arrived in the south. Rivers of Colombia's Amazon basin swell. The forests flood. And the environment is transformed. River and rainforest have become one. Beneath the surface, a new world has appeared. What was once forest is now a rich underwater habitat. The anaconda's territory has grown. The fish have fresh feeding grounds. Amongst them is a hunter as notorious as the jaguar. Known as the tiger of the river, the silver arowana has changed little over 150 million years. It's the male who looks after the young fry in its mouth. Perhaps even more unusual is the way arowana hunt. Living in a tree doesn't mean you're safe from its jaws. This bush cricket is completely unaware of what lurks beneath. Arowana have a divided eye that allows them to see under the water and at the surface at the same time. They have been known to leap over two meters plucking prey from a branch or overhanging vine.
the great rivers of Colombia's lowland tropical forests wander and wind as they grow. The waters, enriched by the organic debris they dislodge, turn dark brown. Patrolling the dark waters is a creature once believed to be from legends. The largest of dolphins, the rare pink river dolphin. Hunting their prey in murky water using echolocation. Over the years, so many have been killed, they are now seriously endangered. Sustainable fishing techniques are helping to protect them, while preserving future fish stocks for local fishermen to feed their families. Living proof that there are ways to protect this part of wild Colombia. Hopefully it will not be too little, too late. Each year, new creatures emerge that remind us we must take care of the wilderness because we never know what it may be hiding. As recently as 2010, an amazing new animal was discovered hiding in the dense, impenetrable forests of Colombia. It was a shy, small mammal completely unknown to science. The Caqueta Titi monkey, the rarest monkey in the world. as few as 250 are estimated to exist. And they are only found here in Colombia. They mate for life, the bond cemented by a twisting of tails. Witnessing for the first time the precious Titi is an amazing privilege. This newly discovered monkey, proving again that wild Colombia is still full of potential discoveries. And there's more surprises out at sea. Two unique islands of the Pacific coast have their own survival stories to tell. Marpello and Gorgona. Here on the Pacific island of Gorgona, nature is coming back from the dead Less than a century ago, the forest was slashed and burnt to make a prison complex. Now closed, it's become a national park and the trees and wildlife are coming back showing again that nature will return if the right steps are taken.
Further off the Pacific coast, on the most westerly part of Colombia, nature is breaking all the rules. Marpello Island is a volcanic monolith, 378 kilometers from land in the middle of nowhere. It is pure rock. It shouldn't support life, yet land crabs and lizards scurry about. Life exists here because of the waste of one seabird. The Nazca booby. Over 100,000 of them, more than anywhere else on the planet. The unforgiving environment and shortage of food means survival strategies take a ruthless turn. Boobies can hatch two chicks, but one will be five days older and five days stronger than the other. The older chick is programmed to take care of itself in a drastic way. While the adults watch, it will kill its weaker sibling. Ejecting it from the nest ensures it will get enough food from the parents for itself. second chick becomes rich picking for the crabs and life goes on. Once a chick has removed its sibling, the parents dutifully take care of the lone survivor. It's nature's insurance policy. Every breeding season, if the first egg does not hatch, there is always another to take its place. Further north, off the Caribbean coast of mainland Colombia, is a cluster of small tropical islands. One, Providencia, in the San Andreas archipelago, is just what you'd expect from a Caribbean paradise. Except when night falls. Then, watch out for zombies. Every year, the land-loving black crabs, known locally as zombie crabs, come down from the hills. Their mission is to get to the beach and lay eggs that can hatch in the sea. The crabs are a local delicacy, but during the migration, roads are closed to cars and bikers ride carefully. Colombians work together to protect the crabs during the breeding season.
and it's paying off. The crabs live on to produce millions of young. Food for humans and a healthy population of wild crabs. Sustainability in action. So many crabs lay so many eggs that even when natural predators flock to feed, enough will survive for a next generation. And beyond the beaches, on coral reefs and protected marine reserves, life thrives beneath the waves. In Colombia's Pacific waters, close to the equator, the creatures of the underwater worlds are startling in their numbers. Heat from the equatorial sun overhead drives a food-rich current that swells up from the depths. It creates one of the most extraordinary pyramids of marine life to be found anywhere in any ocean. theatre of light and life. From January to April, the action intensifies the most spectacular underwater assembly begins. Hundreds of hammerhead sharks appear from the deep Pacific in one of the biggest gatherings on Earth. have wounds and infected battle scars. So a hospital cleaning station opens for business. Barber and clarion fish busily peck at the parasites that feed on the shark skin. It's food for them and medical care for the hammerheads. The perfect symbiotic relationship. Nature has maintained this complex and delicate balance over four billion years of evolution on Earth. Fifteen thousand years ago, humans arrived from Africa and began to change the landscape forever. Crossing from the north, Colombia was the first stop for humans in South America. 
they were curious creatures, walking on two legs and using tools. Hunter-gatherers lived in the rainforests and along the coast. Some settled, constructing a permanent shelter. As the centuries went by, with growing ingenuity and skill, they built grand terraced towns out of the stone. This is one of the best preserved and comes from a time before the empire of the Inca. It was discovered in the early 1970s and remains a monument to civilization. For almost a thousand years, this epic construction, now known as the ruins of the lost city, was the hub of trade in Colombia's northern rainforests. Descendants of these early indigenous Colombians still survive today, living in secluded pockets in remote forest and high mountains. As well as embracing the forests, early people followed the water. The rivers became trade routes. Just like today, they populated the lakes, lagoons, and seashores, thriving on the waters, fishing to survive. For many thousands of years, Colombians were at one with nature. But as time went by, the population grew, and so did the need and greed of man. Soon, the natural resources of Colombia were feeding a global desire for gold, precious metals, and exotic exports. Great cities and ports, like here in Cartagena, stand proud, welcoming traders and visitors. But as the towns and cities grew, the population began to pollute the waters of the rivers and seas and turn the forests into wastelands. It's still happening today. wild lands are being harvested and abused. The craving for gold, coal, emeralds and oil, coffee, rice, palm, soy and sugar seems unstoppable. Each industry making its own scar on the landscape and its own stain in the waters. The destruction of ancient habitats will soon be irreversible. The jungles, wetlands and rivers, home to Colombia's plants and creatures, are being destroyed.
but the civil unrest of the past 50 years has left many natural habitats untouched as people moved from the countryside into cities, giving Colombia a unique opportunity to preserve environments which many other countries have already lost to human encroachment. National parks and protected areas created from the 1960s onwards are also playing a vital role in keeping Colombia's incredible natural wealth alive. One of these parks is beyond imagination. It is the best kept secret in South America and is the unknown wild heart of Colombia. It's called Chiribiquete, and it is a reminder of Colombia's beginnings. Spoiled haven, wildlife abounds and uncontacted tribes are still thought to live. This is truly a lost world. Standing proud above all are the massive rock towers, tables of the gods called Tepuis, carved from the oldest rock on earth. No one knows what awaits discovery here in Colombia's heartland. It's the most unexplored ecosystem on the planet. The rocks of Chiribiquete speak to us. Written on the stones is a message from the past, in paintings the color of blood. Over 20,000 drawings, the first great temple of American art, deliver an ancient message that holds true today. The people who once lived here have left in pictures testimony of their awe and respect for the wild. Their images show us it's not human destiny to destroy the world. The universal message is, we must care for the world we have been given. Every living thing on Earth has been entrusted to us to protect. We are the guardians of our planet. The magical creatures living in wild Colombia are proof it's not too late for action. The condor and hummingbird should always grace Colombia's clear skies. Rays and whales must be free to swim in clean oceans. Unpolluted rivers need to flow for dolphins, fish, and all who drink the waters. 
forests must be protected and new ones created for the endangered monkeys and precious animals that call the jungle home. For the sake of all living things, including the people who live here, Colombia's wild lands must be cared for. In 2015, this film premiered in Colombia. For the Arawakas, one of the country's oldest indigenous tribes who still live deep in the rainforest in Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, it was a truly unique experience in Nabusamaki, their sacred village. The Arawakas follow a long and pure philosophy which teaches them to take care of the planet and live in harmony with nature. An ancient way of life that is finding a new resonance in our modern world. The formal premiere followed in Bogota and was attended by diplomats. The film received an unprecedented reception. The most popular film in Colombia's history. In a country so vast and varied, it was the first time that many had seen the incredible natural beauty of their own homeland. It must not be the last.